Tuesday evening. Hope everybody's been blessed so far this week and uh, and just uh, enjoying every day of life, living it for the Lord. You know, uh, as uh, we go through every day. It's important that we get the Word of God into us. And so tonight I want us to look at the Word just for, just for a few minutes. So if you've got your Bible, I want you to turn to Romans chapter 10. It's a very well-known verse of Scripture, uh, verse 17. And it says... So then, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Now, as we read that, faith comes by hearing, and hearing. In other words, it's repetitive. And um, So with that question, have you been hearing the Word of God, but nothing is happening? Could it be one of two things, or both? One is, you aren't really hearing the Word of God. You heard the Word of God, but you didn't hear the Word of God. It didn't sink in. Or, maybe it's that you're not applying the Word of God in your life. Now, if you noticed, verse 17 started with, so then. So what was Paul talking about before he went in about faith come by hearing and hearing the word of God? Let's look at verse 16. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So, not all obey the gospel. And that is, I think, one of the big things that every person, including myself, we have to make a decision. And that's why sometimes the more you know, <laughs> the more uh, is required of you. I mean... Because when you know what the Word says, then God expects you to do what the Word says. Like in the book of Joshua chapter 1, when God told him to meditate upon the Word day and night, and then, and then, thy will shall be prosperous. God didn't say, uh, Joshua, you're going to prosper and everything's going to be good. And if you got time, meditate upon the word a little bit once in a while. No. He didn't say that. What he said was meditate upon the word day and night. In other words, constantly be a thinking about the word of God. And as you, you know, it would be better if people would read one verse, two verses, three verses, than to try and read one chapter, two chapters, or three chapters. So the thing said, well, I've read the whole Bible. You may read the whole Bible, but how much did you get out of that Bible? There is scriptures that I have read, studied over the years. And a lot of times I thought, well, this is the way it is. I've got it down pat and have ministered on it, been minister, listened to ministers preach on it. And then all of a sudden, God just give a, a revelation of something that I had never thought of, had never saw, that was in the scripture. All the time it was there. 
but I wasn't focused on it. I was getting things out of it, but I wasn't getting the complete word out of it. And that's why, take a verse of Scripture, one verse of Scripture, and think about that verse all day long. Because you read a whole chapter, two chapters, or three chapters, you may be looking at a big picture, but are you going to get the little nuggets, the little hidden treasures that's in each verse of Scripture? You could take the shortest two verses in the Bible. And meditate upon them. Both two verses of scripture. Is just two words. Each scripture. Jesus wept. And pray without ceasing. Those two. You could take either one of them. And you can meditate upon that. Day and night. And constantly be getting something out of it. Um, see, the more you know the Word of God, then the more sure you are, and the more able you will be to have boldness when the attacks come. The attacks are going to come. If you're serving God, you're on the devil's hip. I don't care who you are. You're not immune to it. And the only way that you may be immune to it is if you don't know God and the devil's got you blinded. But if you're on God's side and you're serving God to the fullest, attack's going to come. You may handle it like a trooper. Go through it and nobody never know nothing about it. But then a lot of times you may be going through it and everybody knows what you're going through. Not that you're having to tell anybody, but it's whether it be sickness, whether it be uh, family issues, work issues, whatever it may be. The thing is, you get that word in you. And it builds you. You take David. When uh, when uh, Samuel anointed him to be the future king of Israel. Um, he didn't choose to be the king. God anointed him to be king. And if he had probably known that he was going to have to live in the wilderness. He was going to have to hide for it, run for his life and live in caves because he was a, a would become a fugitive. And he probably would have said, oh, no, I'm not going to do it. And uh, he didn't pick the battle. God done had it chosen out for him. And what he did know was what the outcome would be. And if you go back in reading about David, right before he became king, he had just come to the point that he thought it's never going to happen. How many has been there and done that? You just got to the point. You've been so many battles. You had seen so much thing. You had faced so many difficulties that you were just ready to say, I'm lost. I can't win. I take a step forward. I get knocked back to. David felt like that. We feel like that too sometimes. But you know what? When we've got that word in us, 
that word becomes life. It becomes the fuel for the Holy Spirit that is inside of us to build us up. When David and his men lost everything, their wives, their children, their herds, their everything, when the enemy had came and ravaged their their village, took everything they had. The men thought, talk, talked out loud about stoning David. This was bef right before he became king. And David, it says, encouraged himself in the Lord. How did he do that? Well, he had a little talk with God. And he asked God, God, what am I going to do? Shall we go after him? Can we catch him? Will we recover? And God said, yes, yes, and yes. Not only did David and his men catch the enemy, they destroyed the enemy, and they took not only their families back, not only their own personal goods back, but they also took the interest uh, and the wealth of the enemy with them. In other words, they got a bonus. And it was all because of one man, David. Because David was the only one that encouraged himself in the Lord. You may not have nobody there to push you, to pat you on the back, tell you everything's going to be all right. That's why it's so important that me and you alike, no matter what difficulties we face, we keep our relationship with Jesus open. That we can go to him 24-7. He doesn't know what we feel in the heart. He doesn't know what we think. It's when we pour out to him that he can comfort us. Uh, You know, there's a lot of battles that I wished that I could have avoided. Yet, it was th it's been through every battle that God's given me strength. He's given me knowledge. He's given me insight. To help understand. And sometimes it hurts. Beyond all means. Because most of the time. The battles are going to be. Among those you love. Whether it be sickness. Relationships. Or whatever. And yet. It's when we finally. Get the word of God that it becomes real to us. I want you to go to 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. And uh, in verse 6 and 7, Paul writes to Timothy. He says, For I am now ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. I fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I've kept the faith. Hmm. Paul says, My time is about right here. But that's all right because I've kept the faith. I've fought the good fight. And then it goes on, henceforth, verse 8, There is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which it, the Lord the righteous judge 
shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto them also that love his appearing. Wow. You know, um, we, it, it, it's keeping the faith in the things that we go through. If you back up to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 15, he says, Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. In other words, when you start meditating upon the Word of God, when you start thinking about God, God is going to profit you. Sooner or later, it will profit you. Because when the word becomes real, you'll have the boldness, you'll have the peace to confront the battle, to speak life, speak peace, speak the word of God. Uh, Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. Uh, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their life unto death. Well, that's just what we read back there in 2 Timothy, uh, chapter 4, about uh, Paul. When he said, hey, uh, I'm ready for my departure. It's near, you know, it's right here at me. And I fought the good fight of faith. And he knew. You know, when, that's why when the word becomes so real, then there's no defeat in life. You win. Death doesn't defeat us. If you're a Christian, you just got victory. You just went into the place in heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ where there's no sorrows, no heartaches, no sickness. None of that. Not like you're on earth. And, uh, uh, see, that's why the very thing that Jesus did when he found unbelief was what? What did Jesus do when he found unbelief? When he went into his hometown and couldn't do any miracles except for a, a very few, what did he do? He started teaching. He taught them the word. You name it, he taught the Beatitudes, forgiveness, giving, tithes, healing, love, the end of time, and on and on. I mean, Jesus covered all the bases. And as a minister, we should cover all the bases too. Because there's a hell to be shunned and a heaven to be gained. Hell's real. And it's eternal torment. Heaven is paradise that we have never, ever seen here on earth. You could take the greatest paradise that place that you think of to, to go. And it still won't be a drop in the bucket to what heaven is going to be like. And both places is eternal. Hell's going to be cast into the lake of fire. But it's an everlasting fire that will burn. We'll never see it. If you're a Christian, if you're serving the Lord Jesus, you don't have to worry about that. Because you're going to be in the greatest place with the greatest God of all of creation. Jesus Christ. Again, that's why God told Joshua, meditate, meditate. And the word meditate back in the Old Testament means to speak forth. In other words, speak that word. If it's one verse of scripture, speak that word over and over. And then thy way shall be prosperous. You know, uh, when you have the word of God in your life, uh, then you can 
and sort out things. Uh, you can sort out the good, the bad, and the ugly. Because the truth of God's word shall do what? Make you free. Process. Make. Process. Make. From point A to point B. It's a process. And the more that word's going in, the more closer you get to your victory. Uh, you, you know, you may say free from what? Well, you may, whatever battle that is before you, or that is attacking you, or that is being prepared to come after you. Uh, you have to have your mindset to fight the good fight of faith. That nothing can separate you from the love of God. Oh, the last part of Romans chapter 8, Paul just plainly put it all out there. What, who can separate us from the love of God? Tribulations, persecutions, what? Who? Nobody, if you know how much God loves you. And, uh, you know, that's why David could have looked at the task at hand and said, you know, this is just too much. It's not worth the fight. But he didn't. Even though he was right at the very brink of it, it's sort of like um, uh, Gary Smalley was, uh, who does, did a lot of relationship studies, and he, and in one of his writings, he said his son asked him, said, uh, "Dad, when's it going to get better?" He said, "Son, just when you think that it." couldn't get no darker then it's going to get just a tad darker and David was at the point just can't get no worse and then that's what happened when he was at Ziklag and after he had sought after God encouraged himself in the Lord Shortly after he became king. Joseph, another person. He could have very well, when he had that dream as a kid, kept to himself, no, I'm not going to start nothing. But no, he went and told his daddy and told his family, brothers, and it made them mad. You know, God may give you, reveal something to you, and it's just for you. And if you share it, it's going to make other people mad. But don't let them steal your blessing, your joy. And if Joseph hadn't shared his blessing, hadn't shared his dream, then his brothers probably wouldn't have sold him to slave traders. And if they hadn't have sold him to slave traders, then how would he have been able to be a become vice president in Egypt next under Pharaoh. It wouldn't have happened. But it, kept, it took a lot of battle after battle after battle with Joseph keeping himself focused on God. And he didn't have the New Testament to read. He didn't have the Holy Spirit like we got. But he had faith. You know, uh, he could have just quit. I want to read you a verse of scripture out of Isaiah chapter 59, verse 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west, and his glory from the rising of the sun. When, not if, when the enemy shall come like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord 
shall rate, lift up a standard against it. Again, not if, but when. Like a flood. You ever found yourself in a place that you just felt like you was suffocating, that you were drowning, that you didn't see no way out? What happens? The Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord. Who is it? That's the Holy Spirit. Where is it? Inside of me. Inside of you. Shall lift up a standard against him. Hmm. Now, with that said, the word standard is Hebrew. And it, the original word is nous. And it means to vanish away Make to flee away. In other words, when we have got ourselves positioned with God and the enemy starts coming at us like a flood, the Spirit of God inside of us will make the enemy flee. Now that's Old Testament. Let's look at New Testament. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 5. In 1 Peter chapter 5, let's look here starting with the 8th verse. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, as a, not a roaring lion, but as a, in other words, an imitator uh, a fake walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Verse 9 Whom resist steadfast in the faith knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. In other words, you're not facing something that nobody else has ever faced. There's things that we may never face that some has faced. You know, uh, I don't know if we'll ever face the, the martyr that Peter and Paul and the other apostles faced. Um, be crucified or beheaded because we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's, you know, that's pretty harsh in reality, but they kept the faith. Look in verse 10. But the God of all grace, who hath called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. Look right here. Now, pay attention. This is the last part of verse 10. After, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So be it. When Peter wrote that, he knew that people, sometimes more than others, are going to face hardships more than others. But if they'll keep the faith, if they'll keep focused, they'll come out stronger than ever. You know, that's why as long as we're here on earth, as long as we're serving the Lord Jesus, attacks will come. Attacks to our health, attacks to our, our uh, mental, physical, spiritual. You know, we're going to be attacked. Yet, when we keep that word of God going in, 
Like I said, don't try to do three chapters in one day. Do a verse. Do two verses. Do three verses. But keep it sometimes little is more than enough. And that's why don't give up, but get into the Word of God till you know that victory is just around the corner. And, uh, you know, it's easy to say if you're, you know, when things are going good, you probably don't pray as hard as you do when you start going through battles. And sometimes God just lets us go through battles to draw near to him. Hallelujah. Well, I hope this gives you something to think about. If anything, I hope that it just stirred up inside of you to know that you know that God loves you, that you're not going through something by yourself, but you've got the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, ready to go to bat for you, to help you, to strengthen you, to settle you, to establish you, so that victory is yours and the battle is the Lord's. As always, I take this time to give an invitation if you've never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. May today be the greatest day of your life. If you've backslid on God, let's just get back in right standing with the Lord. God, if everyone could just grasp what God wants to do in, in each one's life, if we would just yield to that, it would be amazing what would transpire. So let's just pray this simple prayer. Believe it in your heart. Confess it with your mouth. And God will save you, cleanse you, put your name in the Lamb's book of life so that you have eternal life. So let's just pray. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. The one that died for my sins. I ask for my sins to be forgiven. I accept what you did, Jesus, on the cross at Calvary. That you're my redeemer. You're my sanctifier. You're my justifier. I can't praise you enough. Now fill me with your Holy Spirit that from this day forth I can live for you and give you honor and glory throughout the rest of my life here on this earth. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you prayed it in a minute, Get ready. God will do a work in your life. As always, we invite you to come join us Sunday mornings at Mount Harvest Church. We're just a mile off of Highway 58 at the Caution Light. Turn right, uh, turn on the Greenville Road and go one mile and you'll come to Waterwheel Road and you take a ride on Waterwheel and as soon as you cut, you can cut straight into the church parking lot or you can go on up around the curve and come in on the upper side of the parking lot of the church. Love to have you. Service usually starts about 11, 10 on Sunday mornings. Remember tomorrow evening, 6.30 Bible study. And in between now and then, I hope that you'll meditate upon that word and God will give you some insight. Don't try to tackle too much at one time. Just get little bits and pieces. Because as you build, as God builds a foundation, it's piece by piece, brick by brick, 
block by block. And you'll see that you'll be more rooted, grounded, and established than you've ever been. So God bless Pastor Ed and my wife and all of us from Mountain Harvest Church. Pray that you have a great night, a great tomorrow. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow evening at 6.30. God bless.